guys uh, sort of give us your thoughts on you know where we are right now, year two, you know, as we wind down this one versus what you thought last year, and were you able to set successfully you know take that next step? Yeah, I would say from a tournament operations standpoint, everything has been great. It has gone extremely well all week, uh, exceeded even last year. You know, last year exceeded all expectations, and we set the bar high again this year. Uh, we felt we've met and exceeded those uh, expectations again. Great week of attendance. The weather's been great. Uh, we're, we're trending towards uh, exceeding last year's attendance numbers. We'll know that by the end of tonight and how that uh, played out. Adding the music element was uh, extremely well received. We saw a great crowd at Darius on Friday night, really enjoyable. Everybody had a great time. Uh, and, and now the leaderboard's looking really great too. That uh, looks like we're going to have a great champion here in about a couple hours. I mean, I think the other thing that comes into play this year that's a little different from last year is the course. Um, I think last year afterwards there was a little bit of discussion about the greens and the sand and the, the course just, you know, not being quite what um, they're used to and I think that's totally been dismissed this year. I, I mean I think the greens are fabulous. Mm -hmm. The players love the fact that um, there was a lot of rain and it drained well and the course stood up to all that rain and I think playing Aaron Hills last week um, a lot of them experienced the sand that we have here which is different than that you know white sand uh, down in Florida and they're kind of talking about that and being a little more used to that. So I think the course has held up much better and I think this year I'd say that's a big improvement too. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. Our PJ Tours agronomist uh, is, is, has been speaking highly about the green speeds, getting them up to where they wanted to. Every player we've chatted with coming in, we've asked about tee boxes, fairways, greens, all in great shape. And, uh, and obviously Jack's hearing the exact same thing as he's talked to the players. So uh, you know, kudos to the University Ridge uh, agronomy team for uh, you know, working hard at it yeah. all year. That said, um, we're a year out from the end of the first run of, of AmFam Championships. I'm guessing your timetable is such that you wouldn't want to get to the start of the tournament next year without a longer range vision for where you'll play this tournament and what it'll look like. This tournament has grown extremely fast. I think all of us are pleasantly surprised at how well this has grown, how fast it's come together. And uh, we continue to talk with the PGA Tour and University of Ridge of how best to manage that growth and how can we uh, continue to grow along into the future. So those conversations are ongoing and like I touched on, we've, we've grown faster than expected, which is a great thing. That means the community's rallied behind this, sponsors, uh, volunteers, uh, everybody's really supported. So now we need to continue to grow that long range plan and, and uh, those conversations are ongoing with the PGA Tour and University Ridge. Jack, was there ever any thought to alternating this between Madison and Milwaukee and does this, the success of this mean that you know with what University Ridge has, has done and the way the players have reacted is I, do you see a future of this just kind of being here and maybe even at this site long term? Yeah, I mean, we've had those discussions. We, we talked about it actually before uh, year one last year of, of would we need to alternate this or, or uh, would we keep it in Madison? If we kept it in Madison, would we keep it at U Ridge? And I think to Nate's point, um, I think the course has held up well uh, the first couple of years. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to start discussions on Monday about next year and we want to get it settled pretty quickly. So. Um, from a course standpoint, I think, you know, U Ridge has been great, the players love it. Um, so we just need to make sure that it's, it's set for future growth and things like that. Um, and then as far as Milwaukee, um, you know, I, I'd say just the way things are right now, I don't, I don't know there's a need to do that. Um, but I think we're, we're open to it depending on how many fans we get and what, where the fans are coming from and the base and all, all that type of stuff too. Is there a better way of engaging the Milwaukee market if you stay here, or are there some ideas about how you can get more folks over here from Milwaukee? I think uh, there's a handful of our sponsors that come from Milwaukee. Many have markets here in Madison and Milwaukee, which is great. We continue to, to network in that aspect. Um, of course, uh, you know, American Family has got a proud partnership with uh, Summerfest, and I think that's going to continue to grow uh, a dynamic with there as well, that we can you know, potentially have some you know, cross-promotion there. Um, and hopefully, too, our, our, our field is, is attractive. Price points continue to remain attractive. Uh, we, we, we don't have the U.S. Open here next year, so we're, we're going to be that, uh, that, that primary tournament here throughout the state. So hopefully that continues to draw that fan base over. We, our market, we partner extremely well with our marketing team, and, and they've got an aggressive advertising plan in Milwaukee, and that will continue to remain in place. So uh, we'll continue to make those steps and grow in that market. Okay, and can you guys tell us, you know, this is 
turned into such an entertainment for the weekend, a lot of people talking about the concert, and then of course the golf. But what it comes down to is the charity. Can you tell us what it's like to give what you guys do to those charities? That's the unique thing about the, the PGA Tour champions. We, all the proceeds that are generated through this stay right here in our community. Uh, it doesn't necessarily always work that way with other major events. This is this is one where it all stays right here. Uh, it's it, uh, At times, it's it's emotional. It's it, it's intense when you know uh, you've got a, a world-renowned children's hospital in our backyard and we get to make a significant difference in that. And then last year, you'd be able to touch 33 other charities as well through Wisconsin. So the, the reach is broad, which is even more impactful than we ever thought. So. Um, you know, I, I speak on behalf of our, our tournament team. It's, it's, uh, there's moments of emotion. There's, there's a lot of pride in that, and and you, it, there's a lot of times you feel that overwhelmingness of we're making a big difference, and we're just proud to play a small role in, in those efforts. Yeah, this last this last year in uh, in December, when we actually handed the checks out um, just before Christmas, and, and realizing that a lot of you know the Children's Hospital has our name on it, and they got a big check, but a lot of these smaller ones. I mean, these checks are the difference between them folding and them being able to sustain themselves. And, and I was talking to a person yesterday, an executive director of one of the smaller ones that got a $10,000 check, and how overwhelmed she was about just being able to uh, do what they do and impact people's lives. And that's just one of the 33, the, the other 33. And um, so it's, it's about golf, it's about entertainment, it's about bringing the community together, but it's about the charities. And that's... I mean, think about the partners that we've got, the sponsors, Steve and Nikki. I mean, everybody realizes that's what we're really here for, and everybody's aligned around that. And it's just a really cool thing to to all come together with that being the main goal. It's, mm -hmm. it's great. How about those 948 volunteers that you have? What do you got to say to those guys? They're the backbone of this event. They're the backbone of all PGA Tour events around the country. And, and for them to come out in, in strong force, last year was unbelievable with 1,200. and. Uh, you know, we were a little worried going to the U.S. Open. Would uh, would they all be busy? Can they not work two weeks in a row? It, just the opposite. They came back in extremely strong forces. So proud of them. Can't do it without them. Uh, we know there's more that are even be back again next year. Uh, that some just couldn't have two weeks off in a row. But, uh, but you know, the basis is 600. That's what the PGA Tour advises. You know, to start with 600. If you can do that, you'll run a great event. And for us to have 900, almost 950 uh, again this year, uh, phenomenal. So, uh, and, and kudos to our volunteer coordinator, Gail Perla. She's you know been, been doing this for so long, and it's a labor of love for her. And uh, back in the GMOs, GMO days of doing this and doing this now for us, um, she's a rock star. And if uh, if we didn't have her in place, uh, we'd be in real, a lot of trouble. So, uh, hats off to Gail leading that crew, and she's got a lot of great chair people helping her. And, uh, really proud and she's proud of American family she's been uh, an employee there for it's been, I think, about 36 yeah. years now so I mean if, if there's anybody who loves American family and golf more than anybody out here if you find someone greater than Gail please tell me because uh, she's leading that charge and she was you know back when it was a GMO and she was one of the coordinators of the volunteers and of the, the big tour in the GMO so um, the fact that we were able to get Nate to be tournament director and then get Gail to do the volunteers and then Steve and Nikki to be host and it's just like a, a combination of a lot of really good people who know what they're doing and have a passion for it and um, it's really a it's a dream team and it's, it's great. Jack you knew that Steve would have more on his plate because he was playing and hosting but I don't know if when you map that part out if you ever thought he'd be playing this many weeks in a row what did you learn about your host this week in the way that he was able to in, you know build up that endurance to be as gracious this year as he was last well you know from a golfing standpoint I, I learned this year I mean the guy the guy uh, tried to get an exemption for the US Open couldn't get it and was bound and determined having it be in his home state that he wanted to represent the state at the US Open so whatever it took so he played what did he play the Memorial then he played down in Memphis 36 holes took a little bit of time off but then was right back at the open now coming here so from a pure golf standpoint I mean the guy's 50 years old and he's a superman and and, and uh, you think about think about that but then beyond the golf um, this whole week starting with um, what we had going on on Monday um, what we had going on on Tuesday we had going on I mean he he has attended everything pairing party Darius Rucker uh, concert so not just the golf side but then uh, really being the host and taking it seriously with the sponsors and things like that. I mean, he's 
tremendous. What do you what do you got from the new on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's actually going down to Scott for Planks um, charity outing. Yep down in Oklahoma, um, getting on a plane and flying down there tomorrow to be with uh, Scott for his charity outing yep. tomorrow. Yep. Now, how about that, Thank huh? You. Pretty amazing. Sounds like a little rent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. They're good buddies, so. Yeah. So you set the bar pretty high. Are you worried you can't be able to top it again next year at all? I like the challenge. Yeah. You know, from our tournament side, our operations team, uh, the team we have in place, we like the challenge. It's uh, we grew sponsorship from last year to this year. We like uh, we're ready to be back out in the community again and, and grow the sponsor dollars. We're ready to secure more volunteers. Uh, we're looking finding ways to continue to make it a, a week long celebration. We've, uh, always got ideas out there, and uh, some some we might be off in year three. Some might be year four or five. We'll see when it comes together, but. Uh, it's, it's not easy, but that's okay. Our team's motivated and we like the challenge and uh, uh, I'm sure we're gonna all be talking about right away tonight after we get our winner. I'm sure all of us will sit around after the night and say, all right, let's think of somebody, you know, let's get rolling already for 18. So uh, from our standpoint, we're, we're ready to keep growing this. I mean, my, my main goal starting Monday is to start talking about how do we hang on to this guy and how do we hang on to Gail Perla and how do we hang, hang on to Lindsay and to Katie and all the folks that are that are making it go because that's you know when you start having successful tournaments like this the first thing that happens is other tournaments see it and they they come after uh, your talent as well so you know part of what we need to do is make sure that uh, we keep keep the folks right here so we'll be we'll be working on that you, starting, you, you yeah, must, you must have been watching golf channel this morning when they had greg on talking about how this has kind of become a model and they're trying to get guys like david toms and john daly to host events and and, and do what Steve has done here with the con and then find local sponsors like American Family. Right, right. I, I wasn't listening, but I'm not surprised at all because I mean, I really, I think it, I think it is the model. And um, uh, but you, it's still about having the right people in all of those different areas. And I think um, one of the things that I've seen is the people are so important, and so that's a, a large part of what's driving our success. And some of those conversations you know early on that we've had with the, you know Jay Monahan and Greg and. They've talked about past hosts, Byron Nelson, Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas, yeah. uh, Tiger, Play, Tiger hosts, Woods, yeah. and now Steve. I mean, to have Steve in those same conversations uh, with uh, with those legendary golf figures, uh, it's uh, it's important, and, and we understand that. It's uh, we're we're representing Steve and his family, and of course, you know, uh, representing American family. But uh, there's there's a history of some significant player hosts, and if we get to to play a small role in that history, it's uh, it's pretty neat. Thank you.